point where the people that I that I visit or the photographs are being taken think that I'm one of them. I mean, at, at, in the first part, they thought that I was a, you know, some kind of water star, you know, someone who worked for a water agency. And in the second one, lots of people would ask me if I was an architect or an architectural historian. And, and in the next project I'm about to show you, people start asking me if I'm a physicist, which is really a big leap. Right? <laughs> um, somehow, after a while, you just start to talk like the people that are doing the, the project. And um, I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to hide anything from them. They, they accept me as one of them. They're more likely to show me what I really want to see. Um, but I think it's interesting now I become almost camouflaged by the knowledge and then go on to the next thing and you know, start all over again. Yeah. Do you, when you were shooting these, did you look at the plans ever to see what was going to be visible or hidden at the end? I, I usually do a lot of homework. So if, if there were plans that I could see, I would do that. Um, I usually knew the architect's previous work, so I, I knew what what they were getting at. Um, and usually, I, sometimes I had to go through some sort of safety briefing, so I'd be in the office and all the pictures and projections and drawings would be around. So I, I'd have time to scoop around before I went out and take pictures. And also, sometimes I would be practically on a leash with someone. And sometimes they would just let me go and you know, do whatever I wanted to say. So it really varies. Sometimes I have all day, sometimes I have five minutes. Well, sort of a thing. Okay? Sorry, I'll do that short. This is uh, Scarpinage Hall at uh, University of Pennsylvania by Todd Lillard and Lily Chin, which I think is open now. Next few are all Dan Liebeskin, a couple in Denver, and a couple in Toronto. Denver Museum is open now, and Toronto is not open now. This was a case where I was, I was trying to get there as soon as I could, and was disappointed when I heard that the fireproofing was up on a lot of the steel. But then when I got there, I realized it was much more beautiful that way. I got to the point where I kind of would accept whatever state the building was in. That at first I thought, well, I want to photograph at this moment or, or at that time. And then gradually I began to realize that it didn't matter what state it was in, there was going to be something to photograph. Did you end up with a favorite state? Like a, a different for every building. And I, I only go over the building, each building once. So it, it had to be there. <laughs> Have you ever considered or actually taken just photos of just kind of anti building sites? Like this is the site at which this construction will later come? Is that just kind of tabular asset kind of thing? I actually, I, I thought about a project, um, I guess I thought about it as, as a New York project, but it could be done everywhere. Of the sites when buildings are torn down, before a new building goes up, because it just changes the whole landscape. I remember I actually did a couple photographs at um, 6th Avenue and 43rd Street. <laughs> Not my fault. <laughs> which is right on the corner there, and noticed that there was this incredible view across this open area where the Bank of America building is now, um, to these really interesting older buildings on 42nd Street. That was, I haven't done anything since then, but that gave me a idea. This is also a leaf skin in Toronto. And this is by Stockton and Elam. 
it's, uh, it's a better, better modern research center at Clemson University. And, and this is the last building, well, no, this is the last building outside of New York that I photographed for the project. I've, I've been to a couple more here, like the museum, um, but the photographs are pretty much finished for this book, and it will be out next year. So, I've been trying to figure out how these projects connect to each other, and one of the things I mentioned was the, just the curiosity of wanting to know about what's going on there, and then wanting to take pictures to show other people. Um, I'm not really sure how I got to the next project, but if the first one is about how you make a city work, and this one is how you make a building work, then the next project is how the universe works. This is a this is called the Lee Boom Board. Um, I don't know if you've read in the paper recently. There was a big neutrino experiment at Fermi Lab outside of Chicago, and this is a piece of the machinery that shoots a beam of neutrinos into a big vat of mineral oil and has photoreceptors inside it that look for interactions between different subatomic particles. So, and what's happened in the history of, of physics research in the last century is that the smaller the particle that we're looking for, the larger the apparatus becomes. So, um, some of the last pictures I'll show you are from CERN, where they're building the Large Hadron Collider, which is about 20 miles around. Um, and I, I read today some have described it as either, if, if it's successful, it will be the biggest science experiment ever, and if it's not successful, it will be the biggest earthwork ever. So this is another part of the movie. One of the things that that's different about this project is that the first two projects, access was really the hardest thing. Nobody wanted me to get in to do anything, and it took a lot of funny people and a lot of great teeth. This one, you meet a physicist and you tell them or her what you're doing, and all of a sudden they're giving you 10 names of people to call, and you're getting emails saying, here you want to come visit, when would you like to come? So I'm kind of enjoying the difference here because everybody is happy to have me. This is uh, an experiment called Minos, which is, I've seen half of it, and we'll see the other half this summer. Um, half of it is at Fermi Lab, and it's similar to the first one in that it's a detector. Um, this one is about two or three hundred feet underground. Actually, it's in a space that looks a lot like a water tunnel. Um, this is detecting neutrinos shot out of the glider at Fermi Lab. And about, I guess, five or six hundred miles away, at the bottom of an iron mine in Minnesota, is another detector that's looking at the same beam of neutrinos. So I'm going to go to that one this summer. This is a, I, I actually don't remember the name of this one, but this is an X experiment. They, they, once they've run their course, which is anywhere between two and 10 years, I guess, um, if there's anything usable, they're taken apart and put into other experiments. So this one, and the one you'll see later, was in the process of being pulled apart. Experiments are at if the experiments are at one of the labs, um, then they usually either the experiment is altered in some way. Sometimes they they start with a small version of something and then put a bigger one in the same place. Um, sometimes they take it out and put it something new.